Welcome to Love and Life's Journey DIY. I'm Chantel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Well, it's happened. I am in full-blown Christmas DIY mode, and I have to say I'm really enjoying it. I'm in the Christmas spirit early this year, I guess, but you know if you want to make DIYs for the holidays, you do have to start early. So I am not only making these for me, but also hopefully it will help you as well. The projects in today's video can be displayed indoors, but I'm going to be showing you how to make them uh, more sturdy so that you can display them outdoors if you want to, so that they will hold up better to the elements if you have uh, more extreme weather. So uh, I'm really excited to bring these to you, so let's just jump in and get started. For this first project, I will be using five of these five gallon paint stir sticks. These are the longer ones and you can pick these up at Lowe's or Home Depot or even Walmart and they're very inexpensive. I also picked up two of these uh, holiday picks. These were at Walmart for 98 cents each. You can use any type of greenery that you'd like. And I'm going to be using about three feet of this black and white checked wired ribbon. The first thing I'm going to do is use my miter box and saw to cut off the ends of the stir sticks right where they start to curve in so that I just have straight sticks. And just a reminder, I do have my affiliate links to all my favorite crafting tools down in the description box below. If you are interested in those, this is definitely one of my favorite tools and I definitely use it often. After those are cut, I'm going to take some sandpaper and just smooth off those edges and anywhere else on those sticks where it might be a little bit rough. I'm going to use some antique wax by Waverly and I'm going to water that down and I'm basically making this like a stain. I just think this is so much easier to work with than stain. I think it's less messy and I feel like I have a little bit more control over it, but if you want to use stain, you can do that. And so I am just painting my sticks and then I'm going to use a paper towel, wipe off a little bit of the excess because I want the wood grain to show through. And I'm going to do this with all five sticks. Once these are completely dry, I am going to take them and give them all several coats of a clear sealer. I'm using a matte sealer. If you want something that is weather resistant uh, to help seal the wood. Then once the sealer is all dry, I am going to arrange these in the shape of a star. So I'm going to uh, determine which side I want uh, for the uh, front of my star and I'm going to use those uh, sticks, those sides facing up and then I am going to just lay them out until I get my star shape just the way I want it. And because this is going to go outside I am going to use wood glue to fasten these together and I'm going to use some clips from Dollar Tree and I will be using some hot glue just to help hold it in place while the wood glue dries. But you don't want to use only hot glue because in really hot or cold situations, um, in the summer or winter, the hot glue will just not hold together. In the winter, it just becomes brittle and breaks apart. In the summer, it just gets soft and comes apart. So that's why you need to use an alternative glue like the wood glue. So as you can see, I'm just adding a little bit of wood glue and then also a little bit of hot glue. And then I'm going to use these little clamps from the Crafter Square uh, section at Dollar Tree and just clamp them down until they've had a chance to set up. Now that my star is all dry and secure, I'm going to add my greenery. I'm just going to use these, but you could use something that's a little more Christmassy, uh, like some pine 
boughs, pine cones, berries, uh, really just anything that you have on hand or um, is something for the style that you're going for. I'm wanting this to look a little bit more just wintry and not quite so Christmassy. So I decided to go with these and I didn't do anything to these except spread the, the uh, leaves out a little bit and then I am going to use some floral wire from Dollar Tree and just use this to uh, wrap around the stems and around the top of the star and twist it and tighten it uh, so that it is secure. And since I want to put this outside, I don't want to use hot glue to keep the wire from sliding up toward the point of the star. So I am using just some craft sticks and some wood glue and I'm going to glue those over the top. And again, I'm using a little bit of hot glue to help hold that in place while the wood glue dries. So while I'm working here on the back of the star, it's a perfect time to add the hanger. So I'm going to take some jute twine and tie a loop and then I am going to glue it to the back using some wood glue and a little bit of hot glue. And now I'm going to add my ribbon to the top to finish this off. So I'm going to put the ribbon over the top of all of that that I just glued on the back. This will kind of help make it look nice and neat on the back as well. Then I'll flip it over and I'm going to just tie a simple bow, nothing fancy, and uh, just uh, make it look uh, neat. And then I'm going to secure it with a little bit of glue underneath. And then I'm also going to run some wire through it and kind of wire it to the sticks as well. I love how rustic and farmhouse this is. I did use some greenery that has a little bit of glitter on it, but I feel like I can get away with that for the holidays. So today I am teaming up with four of my friends here on YouTube to bring you lots of Christmas DIY inspiration in a playlist that you will find the link to in the description box below. Thank you also to Kay and Trish of Crafting Cousins for organizing this. And so once you're finished watching this video, be sure to head over to that playlist. So as part of this collaboration, we were all challenged to make at least one DIY using these little Christmas trees from Dollar Tree. So for this next project, I will be using two of these. I will also be using six ornaments out of this package of plastic round ornaments from Dollar Tree. There are 12 in a package. And since I'm going to be using this outside, I found this ribbon. It's a wired ribbon, but it's a velvet on one side and it has kind of a vinyl backing sort of on the, the back that I think will make this a little bit more weather resistant. And then I'll also be using some zip ties uh, from Dollar Tree to uh, hold this all together. So the first thing I'm going to do is prepare my ornaments using some clear matte sealer or you could use glossy because they're shiny but just a sealer to help protect and keep the paint and color on these ornaments. So I rigged up this wire in my garage so that I could just hang them all from it and then I sprayed them with about four coats of these letting it dry in between each coat. So I'm going to be making a swag with these. You can hang this on your front door. I'm planning to hang mine from the lights on the front of our garage. Uh, but what I'm going to do is take the trees and I'm going to remove the little plastic pieces and the little base on the tree. And then I'm going to just spread out all of the branches. And when I do this, I'm going to make them so they are flat on one side. So I'm only uh, kind of fluffing up the branches on one side. 
And as you can see, if you wanted to use these as a little Christmas tree, they are super sparse. So you can use this same technique to make them fuller, um, even if you're wanting to use them just as a little Christmas tree. You can put them together like this and make them fuller. However, I am going to keep mine flat on one side and I'm going to lay one on top of the other and uh, then just fluff them all up. And then I'm going to use some of my uh, zip ties. Yes, that's what those are called. I'm going to use some zip ties uh, to hold these together. So I'm going to use several um, on the end and then uh, several in the middle just to hold them nice and tight together. Since I'm still waiting for my ornaments to be completely dry, I am going to take my ribbon and make a bow with it. And so uh, this is how I make a bow when the ribbon is not uh, the same on both sides. So really it's like a one-sided ribbon. Um, I decide how big I want my loops to be and then I twist it in the middle um, so that my right side is on the outside every time I make a loop. And this ribbon is a little bit hard to work with just because it's thicker and it doesn't want to um, fold or, uh, as well as some other ribbons, but I really think this is going to work better for outdoors. Then I will take a little zip tie and put that through the center and uh, just tighten it and secure that bow. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach the bow using a zip tie or two. And I did wrap the zip tie kind of around the other zip ties and in between them and in between the two posts for the trees just to um, make it nice and secure. Now that the sealer on my ornaments is dry, I am going to take the little tops off of all of the ornaments because uh, they want to come off fairly easily anyway. And so I am going to actually glue them on using some E6000 and just a little dab of hot glue to hold it on while the E6000 is drying. This is going to give it a really strong bond and then they will stay on much better. So now I'm going to arrange my ornaments and just kind of get an idea of where I want to place them. I'm actually only using six ornaments per swag so one package of these ornaments will do two of these swags which is perfect because I'm going to make two, uh, one for each side of my garage. And now that I have a pretty good idea of where I want to place the ornaments I am going to put a zip tie through the top of each ornament and I'm going to zip tie these onto the greenery and uh, again you don't want to use hot glue for this because it will just come apart really quickly in the cold and um, the wind so uh, I think zip ties is a much better way to go to help it hold up in the weather. And once I have all of those ornaments zip tied on, I'm going to use some wire cutters or some heavy scissors and just snip off the ends of those zip ties. And I just added another zip tie um, in a loop on the back at the top to use as a hanger. Here it is hanging on an interior door and I will also show you what it looks like hanging outside from the uh, light by my garage door. If you are new to my channel, I am so glad you're here. I would love it if you'd stick around by hitting that subscribe button. I do a lot of Dollar Tree DIYs and DIYs on a budget here on this channel. So um, if you like those types of things, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also the bell to set your notifications so YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos.
For this last DIY, I will be using two of these wreaths from Dollar Tree, and they both say that they are 12 inch wreaths, but obviously they are not the same size since one will fit inside of the other one. But for this project, that is exactly what I want. The tags call these bamboo wreaths, but they don't really look like bamboo to me. Anyway, I'm also going to be using this unfinished wood snowman head that I found in the uh, Christmas section at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be using some off-white spray paint, or you could use white, and uh, definitely going to be using a sealer again because this is going to be hanging outdoors. So I'm going to start by removing the tags from the snowman and the two wreaths. And then I am also going to be removing the wood scarf section off of the snowman. And uh, to do this, you can use a knife or a paint scraper. Um, I also found it helpful to use my heat gun to kind of warm it up to make the glue a little bit softer. Uh, depending on how much glue is on uh, yours, it may be easier or harder to remove this piece. But just take your time and be careful and try not to you know, destroy the whole thing. I'm just placing some scraps of wood under mine to uh, protect my table and then I'm using a Dremel tool. You can use a drill and I'm drilling some holes along the bottom. I drilled four holes but really I think two is adequate. Now I'm going to use my white or off-white spray paint and I'm going to spray both of the wreaths and I'm going to spray the snowman face. And I'm going to put probably three to four coats of paint on this because that's just what it takes to get a good coverage. Especially on the wreaths because they uh, just have so many crevices and, and they kind of absorb the paint. Once the white paint is dry on the snowman head, I'm going to take some orange craft paint and I'm going to use a couple of coats to paint the carrot nose. And then I'm going to take some black paint. You could use just acrylic craft paint or this is chalk paint. And I'm going to paint both the brim and the main part of his hat. To make the snowman's face, we're going to use the end of a foam brush and I'm going to dip that into the paint and then I'm going to just press that down to make his eyes. And if you want to uh, kind of sketch out where you want his eyes and mouth with the pencil first, that's totally fine. Um, I practiced a face on a paper towel first, so you can do that just to get an idea of what it's going to look like. Um, so I'm just making two dots for his eyes and you could leave them this way. I want to make them a little bit bigger and a little bit more of an oval shape or teardrop shape even. And so I'm going to use a paintbrush to kind of uh, add a little bit to the top, but you could uh, totally leave them just round. Next I'm going to take the end of a little bit smaller paintbrush and I'm going to make some dots that will form his mouth. So these are kind of like pieces of coal. One tip I always like to give when you're doing eyes is to add just a little bit of a highlight of white to this. I'm just using a really small paintbrush and making kind of a little comma shape in the eyes and it just really brings them to life just kind of gives them a little bit of a sparkle. I'm also going to add some random patches of snow along the top edge of the brim of his hat and along the top of his hat and so uh, you don't want to go all the way across just do some little patches uh, across the top just to make it look uh, like he's got a little bit of snow on his hat. 
and I also decided to add a little bit to the top of his nose as well. I decided that his carrot nose needed a little bit more detail, so I am using just a thin Sharpie marker to uh, draw some detail lines on it, kind of just outlining uh, the nose and then adding a few uh, lines along the top of his nose to kind of give it that rounded shape uh, like a carrot would be. And I also decided I wanted to add a little bit of white dry brushing to his hat. Um, since I had already put the snow on the top of his hat and the brim, um, you want to make sure that that's dry completely before you do this or it will smear it all over. Really, I should have dry brushed the hat before I uh, painted the snow on the top edges of the hat. But I really hadn't planned to dry brush the hat. That was kind of an afterthought. If you are fairly new to crafting, dry brushing just means you get a very little bit of paint on a dry brush and you rub it lightly across the surface just to make some light marks. This gives it kind of a distressed or worn look. Once all the paint is dry, I give this three or four coats of the sealer. You want to make sure that it's sealed. I also seal the back of the snowman head and I seal the wreaths so that it's all sealed to help protect from moisture. Now as you can see here I've got some zip ties put through the wreath and through the snowman's head and I don't know it looks a little bit like kind of I don't know, Frankenstein-ish, <laughs> Halloween-ish. I don't know. It's kind of weird looking with those zip ties stuck through his neck. Anyway, um, I put four in here. Honestly, two is fine. Four was totally too many. And you want to make sure that when you tighten these, you do not tighten them too much or it will not lay very flat. And then I'm going to trim off the excess ends of those ties. Now if you wanted to, you could paint that wood scarf piece and attach that back on over the zip ties. But I decided I wanted to make um, a fabric looking scarf. So I'm using some of that same ribbon that I used on the previous project. Uh, and I'm going to just make a scarf using this ribbon. And I will be securing it with some uh, glue and uh, making sure that it stays put, but I'm not going to do that until I'm pretty much finished with the snowman. Next I'm going to attach the larger wreath to the bottom and I'm going to use just one zip tie and again I'm going to put this through and not tighten it too tightly so that it will lay nice and flat. I'm going to take a piece of jute twine. This is I would say about I don't know 14 inches long and I'm going to thread it through one of the zip ties that's in the center of the snowman's head and I'm doing this from the back side and then I'm going to tie a jingle bell uh, to the ends of this and I want them at varying lengths. I want this to look a little bit like buttons uh, that would be on a snowman and, and so I want them hanging at different lengths. I felt like he needed a little color on his hat, so I'm adding this red ribbon with snowflakes on it that I got at Dollar Tree, and I'm going to attach that on the back side using some E6000 and a little bit of hot glue. I also decided the snowman needed a little bit something on that bottom piece, so I'm adding a few uh, sprigs of greenery and a pine cone and a bow and some berries, and I'm going to wire these all on using some floral wire 
uh, so that uh, they will stay on and again I didn't want to use hot glue because I knew that that wouldn't hold up. So now that I'm happy with how the whole thing looks, I am going to secure that scarf down using some E6000 and then a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place while the E6000 dries so that it will be strong. Um, and uh, then I didn't show it on the video, but I did add a little sprig of pine greenery and a little pine cone and berries to the uh, top of his hat as well. And then he's finished. I hope you enjoyed these DIYs that can be displayed both indoors or out and if you did please give this video a thumbs up it really helps my channel and don't forget to check out that playlist in the description box below to watch all of the other videos and incredible Christmas inspiration from these other creators that are in this collab with me today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day.